So Bernadette is Director of the Minerals and Energy Resources Policy Team. She has extensive public sector policy experience and is a regulatory reformer, uh, delivering a range of policy and legislative results across the mining, petroleum, energy and transport sectors. An engineer by qualification, she's worked in various policy roles across the Queensland Government and with the Provincial Government of British Columbia. Bernadette holds a Bachelor of Engineering Civil and postgraduate qualifications in policy analysis and project management. Bernadette will talk to us today about the Geological and Bioregional Assessment Program. Thanks. Thank you. I apologise for the... Uh, I can see you, Vic, but you might not see me the whole time. <laughs> Hello, everyone. It's lovely to be here. Thanks for sitting through. We've got just myself and then Michaela, and then I think there's a lunch break. So <laughs> thanks for sticking with us to this point. So I'm here to, uh, to give you an, an overview of what's happening in this federal government program, the Geological and Bioregional Assessments Program. So in May 2017, the Australian government announced the program. It's a four-year study with uh, a $30.4 million budget. So this funding is committed to assess the potential for shale, tight and deep coal gas in three select basins across Australia and also to assess the potential, well, the, the environmental values present in those basins, and then to look at the potential impact on those environmental values um, if, if those gas resources were to be developed. And the program will be delivered in three stages. So what I'll just go through with you today is to give you an understanding of why it's being done what the program is and the stages that are involved. And I'm from, I'm from the Queensland Department of uh, Natural Resources, Mines and Energy, so I'd like to let you know what, what's in it for Queensland and why we think it's of interest and, and important for us to be involved. And I'll just give you an update on where we are with the current stages and the future steps. So why are we doing it? What is the purpose? Well, the federal government's doing it. Why they're doing it is that it's, it's basically um, a program with a very strong scientific focus. It's a coordination across these basins to bring together the disciplines of geology, hydrogeology, ecology, other land-based sciences to, to get a, a, a strong suite of independent scientific studies. So the overall purpose is to, to develop these extensive data sets and to assist government, industry and the community to understand with more clarity what is the potential for unconventional gas in these basins, to look at baseline environmental data and, and water data to understand the environmental values in the area, and then to bring these data sets together to get a sense of the potential impact of these developments on the environment Bef before the sector takes off. I think this is a, co a, a, con a contribution to what would be called responsible resource development, which is obviously something that the community is very interested in, or increasingly interested in. So the outputs, once we get all of this data together, would be a better understanding of the environmental values there and what um, the impact of an unconventional gas development would be. From the perspective of a regulator, either a commonwealth or state regulator, it would be about more efficient application and assessment processes. And then ultimately, in the longer term, we have a, an expectation that this type of data could contribute to um, increased investment in these deep gas um, reserves um, and to, to see them contributing to the supply of the East Coast gas market in the next five to 10 years, which might be a little ambitious, but you've got to dream big, haven't you, in this world? So the program is, as I say, led by the Commonwealth Government, Department of um, Environment and Energy, supported by the CSIRO, Geoscience Australia and the Bureau of Meteorology. $30 million across three basins, $10 million per basin. And the reason why Queensland is particularly interested is because two of the basins that have been selected are in Queensland. So that process of selecting the basins was stage one of the three-stage study that was completed in April this year. Stage two, which is currently underway, that's assessing what data is available 
environmental data that's available, geoscience data that's available. Stage three will look at additional data collection and then documenting once the impacts or potential impacts are understood, documenting, monitoring, mitigation and management of the impacts that could be expected from the development of these deep gas resources. And that will commence in 2019. So in selecting the three basins, stage one, there was a range of factors considered on um, the, you know, narrowing down the, the finalists and choosing those three basins. So ge geology and prospectivity, obviously it's important to have a sense that there is some deep um, gas in those deep formations. What markets and infrastructure access there is. The regulatory environment, perhaps that's why Queensland scored two of the three. Uh, we have a regulatory framework that supports the development of the gas sector. Also, they looked at environmental constraints and social factors and constraints. So, here is a general sense of the 14 basins that were uh, examined. The three basins chosen were the Beedaloo Subbasin, the Isa Superbasin, and the Cooper Basin. Hurrah! <laughs> so that's very positive. Um, so, as I say, stage two is underway. This is um, some baseline studies uh, of the geology and prospectivity, looking at um, protected matters. We talk about matters of national environmental significance and matters of state environmental significance. There's some interesting work being undertaken uh, in relation to groundwater studies and also surface water studies, inundation studies and those types of things. And then looking at potential impacts, scenarios of uh, what a development, what a field development might look like, and then understanding what the impacts on the environment would be. Through this process, data gaps are being identified. And then in early 2019, when stage three commences, there'll be some additional data collection scoped out and then the impact analysis and documenting this monitoring, mitigation and management techniques. So what's in it for Queensland? Well, what's in it for us is, and I think certainly for GSQ, is to get a better understanding of the unconventional gas potential and the impacts of the development of those uh, uh, resources on the environment. So with that understanding, we'd hope to get more timely application assessments by the department, more complete, um, uh, applications being received from industry because this data will be publicly available once the study is finished. And this data will also support applications under the federal government's environmental legislation as well, which is the um, Environmental Protection Biodiversity Conservation Act. So overall, we'd be expecting to see better environmental outcomes and resource planning. So of course, this is being run by the federal government state governments involved, so you have to have some complicated looking governance structures. So here it is, this is the governance structure, how all of this work will be delivered. You can see the big red dot at the top, that's the program implementation board, underneath that a program leadership group. So it's a federal government project, they're funding it, and they're the primary um, participants on those program implementation boards and leadership group. But what we do have, you can see across the bottom there at the left, we have three user panels, one for each basin. So we're participants in those user panels and the, the membership of those user panels includes Commonwealth regulators, state regulators, industry representatives, traditional custodians and other interested groups depending on where, they, on where we are. So we're members of the user panel. Those panels meet quite regularly. Um, it gives us the opportunity to make sure that the work, the outputs of the GBA, the deliverables, align with the requirements that we have in Queensland for the development of these basins. So we're leading it. Um, our department, Natural Resources, Mines and Energy, is leading the coordination for Queensland. And we're getting some good input from the Department of Environment and Science and the Department of State Development, Manufacturing, Infrastructure and Planning. <laughs> I don't have to say that when I answer the phone. <laughs> So we're at stage two of a three-stage program where we're looking at the environmental and geological baseline data. And our involvement through the user, user panels means that we're going to be given some uh, drafts of the reports out of stage two in the next couple of weeks. And I'll, we'll take that in, internally to DNRME, DES and DISDEMIP 
and we'll be getting feedback back to the GBA team in Canberra in February for the Cooper Basin study and in March for the ISA Super Basin study. So that's where we're at right now. I think it seems pretty clear that just from the other speakers today that there's a lot of interest in the Northwest, which is a great benefit for us that this study is also looking at the ISA Super Basin uh, with some extensive scientific analysis being provided. And as I say, the data will be made available at the end of the program, which will be at the end of stage three in 2021. So put a reminder in your calendar for that. <laughs> um, so we're seeing that this is going to improve Queensland's understanding of the potential for unconventional gas and also to understand the impacts environmentally of those developments. And uh, for the benefit of applicants and proponents, it will support approvals under the Environmental Protection and Biodiversity Conservation Act under the Commonwealth Government's environment legislation. So we're at stage two of three, and stage three will commence in 2019. So thank you very much. Thanks very much, Bern. Um, that is an interesting development. It's not, it's not state-driven, it's, it's a federal initiative, as Bernadette said. And it is the federal government, and I guess particularly Matt Canavan, trying to help the industry move more quickly to developing gas in those basins, the, the, the Cooper, the Isa, and the South Nicholson, in the same area. So the initiative is good. Uh, it's a government initiative, so it, it doesn't work super duper quickly, but it is making good progress. I and mean, we've got lots of CSIRO and, and involved in others, so there's a pretty strong you know, support network behind it. 